Hi, I'm Dave with Safe Mind. Uh, lately, I've been perusing the gun forums and, and chat rooms and page, you know, gun pages on Facebook and other social media. And one topic that tends to come up quite often, particularly in groups of either revolver carriers, which I'm really not going to address today because it's a different situation, and also newer gun owners, and that is pocket carry. So a lot of folks talk about how they're just going to stick their striker fired gun in their pocket, go down to the you know the, the stop and rob, uh, just you know, because they're just running out of the house on a quick errand. So they don't want to be inconvenienced by putting on a holster. Uh, some people say holsters are they're too heavy, they get in the way, they're uncomfortable. So they're going to stick their their striker fired gun in their pocket and again run to the store. Um, I'm not going to get into the safety aspects of it. Uh, there are some concerns with that, particularly with striker fired guns. What we're going to talk about is performance. And again, with anything firearm related, what's called Dunning Kruger comes into play. And that's where inexperienced people have a very high view of and, and have a high sense of comp competency despite that not being true. And the, the problem is they, they don't know what they don't know yet. So we're going we're gonna to put uh, pocket carry versus appendix carry. This is how I carry and I carry a, a SIG. Uh, sorry, my, my, uh, my device came undone here. Um, I carry a SIG P365 primarily in, in appendix carry. And I use a proper Kydex holster made by KSG Armory, uh, not necessarily a plug, but just, just to give you a point of reference here. So um, we are going to do appendix carry versus pocket carry. For pocket carry, I'm going to use a kel 380. Um, not a gun that I would carry, but I, I do have one. And they, they have their place. So we're gonna put it all on the clock. And I'm going to do several shots, probably uh, four or five shots from each position so that we can see what the actual time component is of that. So I've got my shot, my fancy shot timer here. It'll go beep. I'll draw my gun and I'll put one shot on target. So this is just one shot on target. I'm running cold right now. Uh, just set up the range, getting ready for uh, a client. So I haven't haven't been doing any practice, anything other than what I normally do. So uh, that being said, let's go ahead and, and do this. So again, I'm in my normal configuration here. And I'm going to do four shots from the holster, and we're going to put them all on time. Okay? And it's going to be four presentations with one shot each. Okay? Now I'm going to st start everything in what I call the fence position. Good defensive position right here, just so it's consistent. Here we go. Okay. Uh, first shot out of the holster is 1.14. Right. One point one five. Keep in mind that the average citizen context defensive gun use where shots are fired, the gunfight's over in three seconds or less. The standard among my peers, with the fellow instructors, uh, and, and talking to other experts in the industry, the standard is to be able to get out of from your go out of the holster first good hit on target in two seconds or less. If you're doing it in under a second and a half, you obviously put a lot of work into it. I mean, you got to put work into it to get two seconds, but you got to put even more work into it and uh, under a second and a half. And if you're under a second, you're lightning fast. Um, I'm not that fast, okay? I, I have done under a second, but that's not my point here. Okay, so here we go again. Yeah, I'm going to do two more.
Okay, notice I kind of flubbed that one a little bit, missed my shirt, and paid for it at 1.58. One, 1 and one more. Did not get a good grip on the gun coming out of the holster. I was a little uh, low on, on the grip. So 1.42. So that's going to be the benchmark for everything else that we're going to do today. I'm going to do this both standing and seated. The next round is going to be with a kel 380. I have it in what I call a gun koozie. Essentially it's a, a sticky holster. I'm not a fan of these. Uh, there's a number of reasons why. One, notice this one doesn't cover, it covers the trigger, sure, but it doesn't cover the entire trigger guard. Uh, they're meant to stay in the pocket, but that does not happen. And one of the things about a holster is it has to allow you to consistently, repeatedly, every single time, get the gun out of the holster the same way. And with a sticky holster, sometimes the sticky holster, the, the koozie comes with it, comes with the gun. Sometimes it stays in the pocket. Sometimes it's half and half. Um, that creates major issues because if you can't have a repeatable draw stroke that's the same every single time and then something doesn't go the way that you've trained, now I have to stop and recognize that, that OODA loop, right? I need to observe, I need to orient, I need, you know, so I need to fix that problem and that takes cognitive load and it takes time. Another thing you'll see on this holster that's, a, that's another horrible idea is the clip. This is not a pocket knife and it's not a pen, but some people like to clip their, their guns into their pocket. Um, to me it, it exposes the gun, it doesn't protect the trigger, and I'm going to use both the clip and also I'm going to do it full deep into the pocket, but I'm always going to keep the, the pocket, the little gun koozie on uh, because mainly I don't want a striker fired gun in my pocket without some sort of protection. Uh, you'll notice that when you go into the pocket, for a pocket pistol, so if, I have, if I'm drawing my gun normally from a holster, whether it's 3 o'clock or appendix, I'm getting a good firing grasp on that gun immediately. That's the first thing that I do. It's really tough to do that when you're going into the pocket of, of your pants because I have to negotiate this tight envelope here and my hand has to go flat. So I'm pulling the gun out with my entire hand which can put my fingers near the trigger. And in a stressful situation, if you're reaching and you're having problems getting out and you grab that gun to jerk it out of your pants and you shoot yourself, eh, that's probably a bad thing. So again, I'm not talking about safety and the, the horrible reasons, the reasons why this is a bad idea. We're gonna talk about performance. So I'm gonna do three shots. And this is with the little, the little flashlight clip, okay? Here we go, from the holster. Okay, another thing is, notice, now I have to take this out. Be careful not to muzzle myself, which I tend to see people do. 2.68. So we're like a second and some change slower. That, that's bad. Here we go. Second, second shot. This is a pain in the butt. Why well, is faster? 2.18. You know, with work, I could probably easily get this down into the twos. I'm gonna do one more shot from the from the the pen clip. Oh, got a failure to something, which is not unusual for this gun. Yep, it shit the bed. Uh, exhibit A, the kel uh, Don't bet your life on it, man. This is not unusual. So I'm gonna come off camera. I gotta, fi I gotta fix this thing. Got the, got the gun fixed. It was a failure to everything. Uh, again, kel Keltec, uh, they're cheap. I wouldn't bet my life on it. Okay, 
Now I have it, I have full, I've gone full pocket carry, I've gone deep. So the gun's in here, I've got it in the gun koozie, again, I don't want a striker fired gun in my pocket without at least a minimal amount of protection, which is what the gun koozie uh, provides. Okay, so this is a little bit more stressful because it's just not a, a good thing to be to do in this pocket carry. Okay, here we go. Blazing 429. So the average uh, citizen civilian gun fights over in three seconds. The good thing is you have your entire life to figure out how to get this gun out of your pocket. Then the downside is too, now I gotta go searching for my my pocket koozie. Smoking! 4.06. Last one. I, I sure dislike doing that. Four, four, five. The numbers don't lie. All right, now I'm gonna do this from the seated position. Uh, just a regular hard back chair. I'm gonna start off, um, I'm gonna go ahead and do the pocket carry again, starting off with uh, the little clip. Everybody likes that clip. And I'm gonna draw and I'm gonna shoot from the seated position. So I could be at a restaurant, I could be you know wherever I am. Now, keep in mind, if I'm in a car with a seatbelt, which I'm going to do a, vid a video uh, in, the, in the near future here doing the same thing, you'll see that it is nearly impossible, well, it's not impossible, it's really slow getting that, that gun out of, out of your holster or out of your pocket when you have a seatbelt. And if you have it in your pocket all the way, the fight's over. But then again, in your car, the, probably the best tool that you have is that little skinny pedal on the right, push firmly and uh, it will get you out of most bad situations. So again, we're gonna go from the clock. Boy, I don't like doing this drill at all, but we'll, we'll do it. This is, it's for science. Oh, 2.51. Two five one. Woo! Blaze. I kind of fumbled that one. I'm at three oh six. Three oh six. Last one. A little bit faster. Oh, 1.87. Okay, so that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Let's go deep. So, guns in the pocket. Yeah, 1.87. That's pretty fast. There we go. From the pocket. Ooh, got a horrible grip on that gun. Yeah, still got my shot where I wanted it. Not too bad, you know. 4.7. You know, for some of you guys that might be good. So I don't know. You might be okay with that. Three point oh one. Whoa. That's, uh, that's Jerry Mitchell at speed right there. More like Dave Bremson speed. Oh. 
Oh, that one went bad. My, my finger got inside of the uh, trigger guard underneath the gun koozie at a whopping 4.08. Now imagine if I was in imminent jeopardy and somebody was trying to kill me and I'm a little uptight, a little stressed, a little puckered. And that happens. And I go in full hand. Wow, wham! Bloach! So bad deal. Okay, I'm going to transition back over to the trusty SIG P365 from appendix and do the same thing. Okay, now the final test. I am going to be shooting my everyday carry gun, my SIG P365, Tidex holster from appendix. Now, one people, you know, one. Uh, I guess one reason why people say they pocket carry is because it's comfortable. This is extremely comfortable. I don't even notice the gun is here. It's also very safe if I'm wearing a seatbelt because the, the, the stress when I'm in an accident is on what's called my anterior superior iliac spine, ACEs, which are the hip points right here. And so this is, just goes into soft tissue, but everything, all the force is actually on my skeletal structure as it's de designed to be. This is a very safe uh, place to carry. It's very comfortable. I can sit here all day long. Well, I can't sit here all day long because I don't like to sit, but you know what I'm trying to say. Okay, I'm going to do uh, four shots from the holster on the clock. We'll see what this looks like. And slowly back into the holster. It uh, was not my best effort. It was a 1.45. So, I mean, already we're looking at a marked difference. I need to practice this more. I'm not doing what I want to do. Uh, 1.27. I'm going to incorporate this into my dry practice with my Manus X. Slowly. 1.24. One and a quarter. Slowly. So, 1.25. Okay, sports fans, let's just break it down. I, I, didn't, I didn't write down the numbers, but you heard them. We're looking at a two to three second difference, considering that most civilian related defensive gun uses are over in three seconds or less. The West Freeway Baptist Church gentleman who uh, took care of that, that, that bad guy with the shotgun, that was the murderer with the shotgun, I believe once he, uh, once he said go, he had 15 yard headshot in 3.1 seconds. If he would have gone faster, would he have saved lives? No, because that, that's not the way that the that's not the way the scenario is set up. However, on in a one-on-one -on -one engagement, time time is your friend, and the the faster you can get your gun out of the holster, the more time you have to make other decisions. Okay, you have more time to make other decisions, whether that's to fire, whether that's to move, whether that's to do something else. You have that time. If you're thimble farting around with your gun trying to get out of your pocket, again, you could be doing that for the rest of your life, literally. So um, that's, that being said, uh, put it to the test. Don't believe me. Do it yourself. If you're a pocket carry guy and you haven't stress tested the way that you carry, no matter how you carry, if you haven't done it on the clock, then you're cheating yourself. This is all about your life, protecting yourself. Your defense is personal. Dave Bremson with Safe Mind.